Greg is an air quality engineer with USDA NRCS air quality and atmospheric change team. And Greg has served on the development of the NACSAT and the NACSAT committee since its inception. So, Greg, it, um, I'll let you take over. All right. Thank you, Jerry. <clears throat> and um, so Jerry gave you an overview of the tool itself. Um, obviously, he didn't go through a, a demonstration of the tool and how to fill everything out. We've kind of done that already in, in a few other webinars. And so what I want to take a little bit of an opportunity today to do is to focus on NAXAT and how it fits within NRCS and, and our conservation planning process. Um, <clears throat> a little over a year ago, NRCS officially adopted NAXAT as a tool. And, um, and among the reasons why we did that is because we had nothing else to, to kind of fill that gap. Um, again, that's when the, when the NAXAC committee was formed, when they received their first conservation innovation grant, that group recognized that there was a, there was a need within the agricultural community and within NRCS to have a tool that could help us evaluate air quality issues at livestock and poultry operations. And they built a tool to try to help fill that gap. <clears throat> again, because it was developed under uh, the two conservation innovation grants through NRCS, um, we've got some skin in the game there. We've got, uh, we've provided some funding, and so we felt that, you know, this was, was a great example of a success story where NRCS was able to put some funds behind the development of a tool, and, and because we've done that and because it does fill a gap for us, we probably ought to use that tool. And so that's, um, that's kind of where everything started rolling downhill for us for, uh, for implementing NAXAP. Uh, last year, actually July of last year, the NRCS published some national instructions about NAXAT and, and its use, and essentially we are going to be using NAXAT for assisting in resource, conserva resource concern identification and conservation planning efforts for livestock and poultry operations. Um, we, in, the, in the national instructions, it has some very specific ways that we're supposed to use NAXAT uh, as part of our conservation planning process, and it has a lot of you have to's and you should's and, and those sorts of things. But I want to, you know, just remind everybody that again, the reason that we've adopted NAXAT is because we had we had a gap in our in our ability to address air quality resource concerns for these types of operations. This is a tool that can help us get a little bit closer to uh, to dealing with those. Um, as far as where NAXAT fits in, again, we're going to take a look. Uh, we we want to rely still on the expertise and knowledge of our conservation planners and all of the other available data that, that is out there for them, whether they're looking at, um, at air quality in a particular area or regulatory concerns or those sorts of things. NACS has a tool that can help us maybe focus the efforts of our conservation planners a little bit better in trying to identify where air quality resource concerns might, might um, pop up on, on different farms. And again, it's very important that NAXAT is, is just a tool to help us do that. It's not going to give you a final answer. It's not going to, to solve all of our problems, but it will give the planner an extra tool in their toolbox to be able to, to make a little bit better choices, a little bit better decisions when it comes to air quality and, and livestock operations. So when, uh, as far as using NAXAT from a conservation planning perspective, when there's a possibility of an air quality resource concern at a livestock or poultry operation, um, you know, we're going to take a look at, at and, and have NAXAT available for use. Um, as far as when there is an air quality resource concern, typically that's based off of whether the producer is concerned or has an interest in a particular air quality issue, or if there's some other outlying factors like, um, you know, complaints for, from an air quality perspective, usually related to odor or dust, uh, non-attainment issues, any local regulations, things like that. Those are, those are kind of the triggers that, that we see um, where you might have an air quality resource concern in general, and then we can take, we can go ahead and use NAXAT and try to figure out, you know, what, um, what those might actually be. Again, it'll help us in that determination. Also, um, it can help us when we're working on uh, conservation, uh, a CNMP for a particular operation. And last year, last October, actually, NRCS developed a new comprehensive nutrient management policy. Um, again, we went kind of back to our roots in developing this policy, taking a look at the underlying um, 
statutory authority that we were given from Congress and, and kind of our original rules and, and kind of where things should land. And uh, what, what was determined was that air quality is actually one of three resource concerns that at a minimum needs to be addressed in a CNMP. And, and the other two are soil erosion and water quality. So given that we now have to address air quality in the CNMP, um, you know, we, we kind of needed some guidance, some tool to be able to help us do that, and, and NACSAT can certainly do that. Um, some of the crossover between NACSAT and the CNMP process is that, you know, NACSAT is, if you might have caught some of Jerry's slides earlier, the different management categories essentially cover all the primary nutrient flows at confinement based livestock and poultry operations. And then we can use that information, the scores that you get in each of those management categories to help us identify areas for further analysis. Again, I wanna, I wanna point out that NACSAT is just a tool that can help us point us in the right direction. We're still gonna rely on our conservation planners to make, to make decisions based on all available information, including the scores that you get out of NACSAT. So as, as far as how NRCS will use NACSAT in general, um, again, Jerry again went through, you're gonna run a, a, a baseline NACSAT report, you're going to answer all of the questions applicable to your particular site and take a look at your scores, that, and those will represent the current management of the operation. As Jerry showed, you can then copy your session um, and, and use the baseline results to identify whether or not you have a resource concern or not. And if you do, to go ahead and formulate a couple of alternatives as, as part of our conservation planning process by co doing that copy session, making a few changes to see if you can change your scores and, and identifying what those changes are and then applying those to, um, to the site using different conservation practices. And at that point, I will stop.